Test, test, test. Testing, testing. Tonight, as we celebrate the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will consecrate in an end to bloodshed. We all join in prayer with him in imploring God for the gift of peace in Ukraine. We pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, under the title of her Immaculate Heart, will through her maternal intercession bring peace and healing to the suffering. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this hour or so of prayer for peace. Peace in Ukraine in particular, peace in the world, and also peace in ourselves, in our hearts. And we have come together here today in Malaysia with all our different dioceses, praying during this time and at different times leading up to dedicating, consecrating Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so, my dear friends, 
let us at this moment in solidarity with the whole church with the whole church in Malaysia and different parts of the world and with the Holy Father let us begin this service and with hope in God's loving mercy and deep sorrow and concern for those who are suffering in Ukraine because of war we turn our hearts to the Lord trusting that he knows our every need and so forgive us Lord for our sins especially our refusal to reconcile with our enemies to kasehanilah kami Help us to reach out in friendship and love, even if we meet with no positive response. Christus, kasehanila kami. Help us to be missionaries of reconciliation, justice, and peace. Tuhan, kasehanilah kami. Let us pray. God of mercy and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow and your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah will be put on the nation under his granite. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That his glory may dwell in our land. His dwell faithfulness. The Lord is
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Praise to you, O you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We will have the montage, please. diplomatic life but we pray that the whole church praying for conflict all around the world especially in Ukraine so if we are Keadilan melalui doa dan panggilan untuk berdialog. Kami mohon. Wei Chuyi, Zhanzhen Zhong, de Guojia Qidao, di dui xing dong, neng gou ting zhi, he jie. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ulaga Nadigal Sibaya 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families separated by war, that they may be safely reunited. We pray too for those who have died in the war. Grant them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who look upon the suffering of your people with the eyes of compassion, have mercy on the world and grant us your peace. Help us to become peacemakers who never cease to work for harmony and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Let us pray. Grant to us, O Lord, that enlivened way of the sacred word that fortifies the human heart. We may successfully overcome the fury of war and resolutely keep your law of love and justice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to My dear brothers and sisters, we have now come to this act of consecration of Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I would like to invite all of us to, together with the Nuncio and myself and all the clergy, to recite, to pray, this prayer together slowly and meaningfully at the foot of the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima. O Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, in this time of trial we turn to you. As our Mother, you love us and know us. No concern of our hearts is hidden from you. Mother of mercy, how often we have experienced your watchful care and your peaceful presence. You never cease to guide us to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Yet we have strayed from that path of peace. We have forgotten the lesson learned from the tragedies of the last century, the sacrifice of the millions who fell in two world wars. We have disregarded the commitments we made as a community of nations. We have betrayed people's dreams of peace and hopes of the young. We grew sick with greed. We thought only of our own nations and their interests. We grew indifferent and caught up in our selfish needs and concerns. We chose to ignore God, to be satisfied with our illusions, to grow arrogant and aggressive, to suppress innocent lives and to stockpile weapons. We stopped being our neighbor's keepers and stewards of our common home. We have ravaged the garden of the earth with war and by our sins we have broken the heart of our Heavenly Father who desires us to be brothers and sisters. We grew indifferent to everyone and everything except ourselves. Now with shame we cry out, Forgive us, Lord. Holy Mother, amid the misery of our sinfulness, amid our struggles and weaknesses, amid the mystery of iniquity that is evil and war, you remind us that God never abandons us, but continues to look upon us with love, ever ready to forgive us and raise us up to new life. He has given you to us and made your Immaculate Heart a refuge for the Church and for all humanity. By God's gracious will, you are ever with us even in the most troubled moments of our history. You are there to guide us with tender love. We now turn to you and knock at the door of your heart. We are your beloved children. 
In every age, you make yourself known to us, calling us to conversion. At this dark hour, help us and grant us your comfort. Say to us once more, Am I not here? I who am your mother. You are able to untie the knots of our hearts and of our times. In you we place our trust. We are confident that especially in moments of trial, you will not be deaf to our supplication and will come to our aid. That is what you did at Cana in Galilee. When you interceded with Jesus and he worked the first of his signs to preserve the joy of the wedding feast, you said to him, They have no wine. Now, O mother, repeat those words and that prayer, for in our own day, we have run out of the wine of hope. Joy has fled. Fraternity has faded. We have forgotten our humanity and squandered how greatly we need your maternal help. Therefore, O Mother, hear our prayer. Star of the sea, do not let us be shipwrecked in the tempest of war. Ark of the New Covenant, inspire projects and paths of reconciliation. Queen of Heaven, restore God's peace to the world. Eliminate hatred and the thirst for revenge and teach us forgiveness. Free us from war. Protect our world from the menace of nuclear weapons. Queen of the Rosary, make us realize our need to pray and to love. Queen of the human family, show people the path of fraternity. Queen of peace, obtain peace for our world. O Mother, may your sorrowful plea stir our hardened hearts. May the tears you shed for us make this valley parched by our hatred blossom anew. Amid the thunder of weapons, may your prayer turn our thoughts to peace. May your maternal touch soothe those who suffer and flee from the rain of bombs. May your motherly embrace comfort those forced to leave their homes and their native land. May your sorrowful heart move us to compassion and inspire us to open our doors and to care for our brothers and sisters who are injured and cast aside. Holy Mother of God, as you stood beneath the cross, Jesus, seeing the disciple at your side, said, Behold your Son. In this way, he entrusted each of us to you. To the disciple and to each of us, he said, Behold your Mother. Mother Mary, we now desire to welcome you into our lives and our history. At this hour, a weary and distraught humanity stands with you beneath the cross, needing to entrust itself to you and through you to consecrate itself to Christ. The people of Ukraine and Russia who venerate you with great love, now turn to you even as your heart beats with compassion for them and for all those peoples decimated by war, hunger, injustice and poverty. Therefore, 
Mother of God and our Mother, to your Immaculate Heart we solemnly entrust and consecrate ourselves, the Church, all of humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. And I would like to add also Malaysia. Accept this act that we carry out with confidence and love. Grant that war may end and peace spread throughout the world. The fiat that arose from your heart open the doors of history to the Prince of Peace. We trust that through your heart Peace will dawn once more. Expectations of every people, the anxieties and hopes of the world. Through your intercession to mark our days, Our Lady of the Fiat, on whom the Holy Spirit, may you, our living fountain of hope, water the dryness of our hearts, in your womb, Jesus took flesh. Help us to foster the growth of communion. You once trod the streets of our world. Lead us now on the paths of peace. Amen. We shall now have the litany to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Mary, pray for us. Heart of Mary, according to the heart of God, pray for us. Heart of Mary, united to the heart of Jesus, pray for us. Heart of Mary, organ of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. Heart of Mary, sanctuary of the Divine Trinity, pray for us. Heart of Mary, tabernacle of God's incarnate, pray for us. Heart of Mary, immaculate from thy creation, pray for us. Heart of Mary, full of grace, Pray for us. Heart of Mary, blessed among all hearts. Pray for us. Heart of Mary, throne of glory. Pray for us. Heart of Mary, most humble. Pray for us. Heart of Mary, holocaust of divine love. Pray for us. Heart of Mary, fastened to the cross with Jesus crucified. Pray for us. Heart of Mary, comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Heart of Mary, refuge of sinners, pray for us. Heart of Mary, hope of the agonizing, pray for us. Heart of Mary, seat of mercy, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Immaculate Mary, meek and humble of heart, Make our hearts according to the heart of Jesus. Let us pray. O most merciful God, 
who for the salvation of sinners and the refuge of the miserable was pleased that the most pure heart of Mary should be most like in charity and pity to the divine heart of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who commemorate this sweet and loving heart may, by the merits and intercession of the same Blessed Virgin, merit to be found according to the heart of Jesus. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would now like to invite His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Wojciech Zaluski, to say a few words on behalf of the Holy Father. Only a few words, my dear, to say on behalf of the Holy Father, great thanks, sit down please, to all of who come here, who came here, and all who follow this liturgy of the Word of God through the internet, or, yes, as uh, transmitted on the, on the line, on the web. Uh, great thank you for your prayer. I take the occasion to say also my personal memories of the Ukraine. I stayed there three years. I served the nunciature in Kiev from 2003-2006. So, my, I am asking you also to pray for my friends who uh, there are and they suffer the consequences of the war and for all Ukraine. I must say you that I enjoyed my stay there. It was a beautiful country. One, maybe very personal opinion, my own, but it's one of the, of the of most beautiful country of the world, Ukraine. Enormous country. Imagine you traveling on the top of the, of the hill, to, hill top, the streets, the roads are like that, and uh, looking endless, endless fields of crops, of, the, of grain and uh, sunflowers. Really uh, a breath-breaking experience. And deeply Christian country. There are the Catholic communities, great minority, because on 20, 45 millions of the population, only around five millions of the Catholics, Greeks read, and one million of the Latin Catholic. So two churches, Oriental Church and Western Church. Only six million, the others all are Orthodox, but our brothers and sisters in our Christian faith. So, I enjoyed my stay for other reason. From my home country, where I was living my mother, to Kiev, to the, to the courtyard of the nunciature, was only 820 kilometers. So I take this opportunity to visit my mother very often by car, driving and enjoying the beauty of Ukraine. celebrating, meeting many people there around, in the parishes, in the diocese, everywhere. Now, unfortunately, the sad moment, 
and we hope that will end as quickly as possible. For thus we pray the Prince of Peace that he grant the peace to this great people which has a natural right aspiration of freedom, of liberty, of democracy, like every, everywhere around the world. But unfortunately are also the forces who want to prim or disagree with these values. Ukraine suffered in, in its history two great disasters, two great wars. Invasion of the Chinggis Khan hordes in, two, in uh, 1241 destroyed completely the country, but completely. The Kiev was razed to the ground. Last few thousands of inhabitants of the capital looking for, for safe in the church of St. Volodymyr. The church collapsed under the, under the weight of the population, grumping, glimping everywhere, the curse everywhere. And so this is a tomb of the, of the Kiev at that time. Now, modern time, the city was a beautiful city, great capital, many millions of population. And again, it's in this trouble moment and this menace to be destroyed again. So this is my, my also my invitation. Keep in your heart the intentions of that country, of that people. Pray for them. This is our arm. We don't have other weapons. We have our prayer. Confident prayer to the Lord, to our Lord, that He extend the peace to the hearts of all people, even that of aggressors before all, and to all others, and grant, really, His peace to that martyrized uh, people and country. Thank you for your attention, thank you for coming, thank you for your participation and for your prayer this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those words where you have a personal experience. You know the people there. You yourself were there in the Ukraine. So let us, my dear friends, not take peace for granted. Wherever we may be, whichever part of the world that we may come from, it is only when we lose what we have then we realize how precious this peace is. And so let us be peacemakers and let us pray that we will always preserve the fragile peace perhaps that we have, many countries have. And let each one of us be that instrument of peace. And so I would now like to conclude and before that to say a word of thanks to all who have made this possible, the Cathedral of St. John, the Evangelists, all of you who have made the effort to come here and the many, many who are online, the different dioceses in Malaysia and all around the world, the parishes, that have also tuned in, all the religious, all the clergy that are also praying during this time. And for those of you who are planning to stay up to hear the Holy Father himself consecrate 
Russia and Ukraine, you may do so from midnight till about 2 a.m., I believe. Thank you once again, Excellency and Father Gerard, Father Robert and his team. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.